All right, we're going to get going with our next session. So uh, if any conversations need to go on, if you can take it outside. So I guess only the strong survive. This is what's left, right? Um, this, uh, this session we're presenting on airport events and activities. A uh, bit of housekeeping. We have uh, Baker International that's one of our sponsors, so we want to make sure we thank them, make sure you visit them. And then also um, Southwest Airlines, make sure you fly with Southwest. Um, from a show of hands, how many people here have actually ran some sort of airport event. How many of you have been fortunate enough to do that? We have a few hands here. And, and actually, there's not a lot of hands that are raised. So you, um, there's a lot that can be taken from this. Again, um, my boss, Gary Peterson, has always said that if you've seen one airport, you've seen one airport. And so when you go to a different airport, you're always going to find a different situation, whether it's your tenants, your customer base, the elected officials. And so there's no one approach that fits all. We have a couple of good practices that we're going to talk to you guys about on how you can manage and host an event. But it takes a lot of planning, a lot of effort, and a lot of um, having people sit on your couch and you counsel them uh, in the meantime. So with that, I'm going to introduce uh, James Jenkins. He's the, uh, airport, the airports director for the county of San Bernardino. And that's a system of airports, if you're not familiar with it. And they have six airports. And two of those airports are running events every year. Um, so you have the Plains of Fame Air Show and then um, the Apple Valley Air Show. Two different approaches. One is ran by an association and, or a business. And the other one's actually ran by the county itself. So um, we have a wealth of knowledge. James has been with the county for, do we want to tell him? <laughs> Too long. <laughs> So um, with that, I'd like to introduce James Jenkins. Thank you all. So it's 26 years. So by a show of hands, how many wet shavers do I have in here? So what's a wet shaver? Oh, there's one back there. So wet shave tip of the day, olive oil, tea tree oil, pre-shave. That's what you get. OK, so you know. I wanted to talk a, a, a bit about best practices and, and then get into what some of you want to hear about, and that's the Plains of Fame air show lawsuit and how we're managing our way through that. So we're being sued. So some of what, you know, the, the juicy details I won't be able to get into, but uh, I'll give you some insight as to how we got to where we are today. So Brett, how do I use this? Okay, so just a few key points. Um, first of all, relative to starting out any event, you know, start out by promoting your airport, uh, be professional, and you have to be the resident expert. Um, so one of the things that we've done is, you know, you want to develop key talking points for your airport. So when you run into people, you can talk about your airport in a couple of minutes or less. You know, key details, you know, acreage operations, number of tenants, uh, return on your investment relative to how your airport impacts economically your, your community. Try to get those talking points and be ready to, to spew them out at a moment's notice. Um, engage your public information officer. Um, if you have money, money solves problems, you can, solve, you can hire a public uh, relations firm. We've been able to do that. Uh, community outreach. Community outreach, one of the things that we do uh, when we get a noise complaint, we go visit folks. We go to their house, we knock on their door, and we talk to them about the phone call that they made. Um, try to develop that type of rapport in your community so that you know, when folks see you, it's not all about you know, trying to answer questions or, or get around the problem of, of, of a complaint. Uh, be a part of the community. Try to participate as much as you can because you know, the goal is to, to bring your airport out front and center so that you're a part of the community, folks know who you are, so that when you have an event, when you have the, uh, the sounds that are associated with aviation, you're not necessarily going to get complaints because of those activities, because you're a part of the community. Uh, understand your local airport or culture. Try to adapt to that. Uh, be a part of it. Understand what folks are talking about. 
understand what the hangar queens are doing, understand you know why folks aren't buying fuel. Uh, and for those of you airport sponsors out there that you don't know what your fuel numbers are, track that fuel number, track your operations. That fuel number goes down, the operations count goes down. You, you know, it's something you wanna pay attention to so that you can, uh, you can adjust and adapt. Um, educate your electeds. Um, just, re just remember that you are the continuity. You are the staff member. Electeds come and go. They have a, a short period of time to make an impact two, three, four years. But you as a staff member, you're gonna be there. You have to be the corporate knowledge. You've gotta keep things moving forward. You've gotta be able to educate folks and understand and be able to communicate to them how you got to where you are so that when they get the calls regarding your sounds of aviation, uh, phone calls, they understand how you got there and what those sounds really mean to your airport environment. Um, understand the value of time and money, uh, business acumen, sophistication. Again, be sophisticated about what you do. Make certain that your documents are in order, you understand uh, what it is that's being promoted on your airfield and you understand how that event can become successful. Um, understand your permitting and entitlement process. Try to have a standing CEQA document that covers some of the elements of what your special event may cover so that if you get to a point of having a major event, you don't get that stumbling block of having a CEQA question come to be a stumbling block for something that could bring a lot of money to your organization or to your system. Um, you know, you have these things on the shelf, have them in the can that you can reach to, uh, brings a lot of utility and value to your organization so that, you know, those things are perhaps things that you're Biz, your event sponsors won't have to invest in, which brings value and value added to the, to the event, you know, for your, makes your facility attractive over Riverside, in my case. Uh, we're Chino, they're Riverside. Anything I can do to, to make myself more attractive than the Riverside Airport, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, restroom facilities, hand washing facilities, cooling stations, these are things that we put in our base contract. So that those are things that, you know, you want to ensure that you know, the public visiting your facility, they're gonna have basic services. We put that as part of the permit agreement. So it becomes an element that if you're gonna have a, an event at our facility, you're gonna provide these basic services. It's great that you know, the, 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 uh, the service organizations can sell water for a couple of bucks a piece, but if you have a cooling station, at least you know that some folks that can't have, you know, don't have that extra money to buy water will have a cooling station or water to be able to utilize. Um, outside agency participation, make certain you're engaging those folks, make sure you understand what services they provide and how those services can uh, bring value to, to your event sponsor. In my case, one of the examples I wanted to use was make certain to include your public health department uh, as part of your, your, your group of folks when you uh, get into this next element of the jumpstart meeting. Um, and we use the Jumpstart just like any other uh, entitlement entity does. We bring all the stakeholder entities together, uh, the bodies, the police, the fire, private security, local traffic, Caltrans, parking services, and the list goes on. You wanna make certain that those folks are included as part of that Jumpstart uh, program so that when you have that weekly, monthly, quarterly meeting or whatever it is, those folks are part of your planning team. So make certain that you engage those and others that you can think of that may have an interest in your event, that they're around the table and their voices can be heard. Um, it goes a long way when you're being deposed, when you can uh, recite that list of folks that you had at the table uh, that you included. Uh, it makes you look good that, you know, for the electives that you had the foresight to include the, the alphabet list of folks uh, as part of your planning committee. Um, I'm going a bit fast because there's some, some things I wanted to get to. Uh, engage your economic development agency or department. Make certain that you understand the services that those folks can provide you. Take advantage, leverage those, those services and staff members to help you with your events. Uh, use your affiliations. Let me move on here. Um, I guess I'm still there. Use your affiliations with, uh, with those that you know, your mentors, those that you 
counsel with, uh, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Most of the things that we do in an airport environment have been done before. Use the resources, use ACRP, use uh, the service organizations, use AAAE, Southwest Chapter, ACA, ACI, use those to your best advantage and, and float those questions out there uh, on the on the blog uh, uh, networks that we have and, and get your questions answered. A lot of us have had the experience of, of running events and can give you insight. Float it out there. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Uh, recognize that your tenants and those that are running events, they're experts in their field of endeavor. Uh, but most of them, in my experience, are poor business planners. Um, so it's take, you know, one of the things that you can bring to the table, value added as an airport sponsor, airport manager, bring that basic business 101 to the table. You'll be, so for the younger managers or airport sponsors in the room, you'll be surprised as, you know, what basic level of knowledge that most uh, ANPs or radio shops or, or paint shops or upholstery shops, they don't understand business. They can do tuck and roll and they can do all manner of things relative to their uh, order of business, but when you talk about running a business day to day, cash flow, money, those types of things, they won't know. So you need to be the resident expert and be able to guide them at least to the resources that they may be able to utilize. Um, screen your tenants, screen your, your operators, screen those that want to bring the events to the table. Make certain that they understand the event. Uh, I've had the experience of having uh, an event sponsor uh, that was going to run an air show, get down to two days before the air show and pulled out. And uh, my staff and I, we had to pick it up and, and run with it and, and make the event, uh, we had to, to pull it off. Uh, we were able to do that. Um, being part of the planning, uh, planning body that was moving forward with that uh, event, we were able to do it. But if you screen them, you ensure that they're financially sound and you ensure that their entity is valid, um, it, it's a basic start. You know, one of the, the comments I've, heard, I've put here is, you, you know, the secretaries of state are your best friends or good friends. You know, the number of times that I've gone to the secretary of state uh, and pulled up a business entity in the state of California to find that they've been suspended or haven't paid their taxes and they aren't a valid entity in the state of California, they can't execute a permit or can't execute an agreement. And if you execute it with them, it's an invalid permit or invalid agreement or contract. So those basic types of uh, diligence make certain that you're doing. Make certain that you're educating uh, your legal counsel to follow through with those things because sometimes legal counsel, they get so wrapped up in what they do relative to contracts that sometimes the basic uh, diligence items are forgotten. And this has been my experience over time that uh, I've had that happen. Uh, Develop a fee structure, pricing structure, and make certain that your documents are sound. Again, uh, one of the ways that you do that is to make certain that you're sending your counsel to specific industry training. And again, some of these things that we're talking about take money. Um, so we're here to talk about making money. So the things that I've, I'm talking about here, if you're, fu if you're sitting there commenting or thinking, well, I can't do that because I don't have money, take notes. Uh, if you have a successful event, over time, you'll build that nest egg and you'll have money to do things that you, you want to do. And you know the things that Brian and his group can do for us with those 90% dollars, you'll be able to leverage that to your best advantage. And also Caltrans has money as well. So keep those things in mind as you think about the fact that you may or may not have money. Um, Use your event registries for uh, your ticket sales. Track it that way. Um, make certain that your, your event sponsors understand that that's an important uh, tool to utilize so that you can go in and you can track those analytics and understand you know, how your event's coming along. Even if it's gonna be a free event, you want to understand what kind of attendance you're gonna have so that you know that you have a depth in your organization for staffing uh, and have that, uh, that the staffing level available that you may need for an event that may be much more successful than you might anticipate. So that's one of the tools that you can utilize. Pre-sale, pre-sale, pre-sale. Do the best you can to get the money before the event, 
uh, so that you understand what kind of monies you're working with so that you can, you'll be able to move forward. Um, if, if you find yourself in a position of, of having poor pre-sales, you can make a decision. You can make a business decision whether or not that event's gonna move forward, have a date certain that you'll pull the plug on it and not move forward. Um, and again, you'll have those, those stipulations and, and contract elements within your permit that will allow you to do that. Um, again, good documents will save you a lot of uh, heartache. Uh, contingency plan and rain dates, those are things that you need to build in. Um, you know, some events like air shows, when you have, you know, air shows that we have at Chino and Apple Valley, we have assets that are coming from, you know, throughout the United States, and, and in some cases, you know, they're being created over from across the, the pond, and, you know, they're coming in from all, all, all over the world. You know, so those types of things you may or may not be able to have a rain date for, but for those events that you can have a rain date for, publish it so that folks know that if there is a rain date or some other contingency, your event's gonna move forward. Um, and again, the codifying and publishing a fee structure and making certain that you have the authority to, to charge fees, which is uh, uh, something that I've run into over time. Um, and an example is I had to take over a fuel operation at one point, but I had no ability or authority to be able to charge a upcharge or service charge for the fuel delivery. So the only charge that I had that was on the books was the fuel, fuel, fuel flow service uh, fee that we charge at six and a half cents a gallon. Uh, we wanted to charge a percentage of gross uh, fuel costs and tack that on to be able to, to cover our expenses, but I had no authority to be able to do that. So make certain that you have at least some caveat language within your fee structure that you can assess a fee or have a fee or an ability to take a uh, a new fee to your board for their, or your board or council or whatever your entity is that, that governs you uh, to, be able to, to be able to charge a fee, it's important. Um, when you can't charge a fee uh, legally, it's a problem. Traditional events, there's the list. Uh, air shows, air fairs, regional uh, aviation events. Uh, we try to do things that routinely, again, showcase the, sh the sounds of aviation. You want your fly-ins, you want your service groups to have fly-ins, you want them to have the poker runs, you want to do things to keep that traffic count up, to keep the community aware that they're uh, in proximity of an airport so that when airplanes fly, you're not getting the call. So do what you can to ensure that airplanes are flying. Simple concept. Uh, military services, uh, the guard units, the reserve units, make certain that they understand that you, you know, what your, your ability to accommodate their assets are. Get those folks to come in and use your airfield. Make that noise. Make the community aware that it's an airport and these are the types of things that they can expect throughout the year. The Young Eagles, you know, the Flying Clubs, the Boys and Girl Scouts, the Royal Rangers, Civil Air Patrol, these are all, I'm giving you all examples of, of entities and organizations that we work with or are part of our airport uh, system. The you know, schools, GRTC programs, ROTC programs, make certain that they understand that you're a venue that can be utilized for their training and other types of uh, outreach that they might want to do, their recruiting efforts. Uh, affiliate yourself with whatever the higher learning education, uh, learning institution is. Make certain that they understand that you're there. Um, try to make certain that you're doing the introductions to your various tenants that could offer services or serve as a venue as a laboratory or classroom. Um, I had the opportunity a few weeks ago to host uh, one of Professor Prope's uh, classes. They came in in a planning group and uh, we gave them a tour and we talked about groundwater issues at Chino Airport and groundwater contamination. What's that have to do with an airport? Well, that's part of being an airport manager and airport sponsor. All manner of things that you might have to deal with uh, sometimes you gotta become an expert in and, and being that venue or place where folks can come and do things keeps your facility out in front of the community, keeps your airport out in front of the community. And again, make aviation noise as often as you can. Uh, photo shoots, billboards, uh, magazine spreads, television commercials, that list, uh, make, t make certain that your registrar of voters understands that you may have a venue that can serve as a polling place. Again, the intent is to make your airport a part of the community. 
uh, bring folks out to the airport on all manner of activities. Um, you know, we heard about destination airports. Make your GA airport a destination for things so that the community understands you're part of it. And it's not about necessarily about, you know, the rich guys and airplanes, which is what we all hear frequently. We want to try to get rid of that stereotype because we understand that that's not the case. Those that fly make a sacrifice, um, and it's a sacrifice of love. But uh, those that don't understand the community think we are a closed uh, environment, and they're not invited. So we're going to try to do the best we can for, for changing that type of uh, uh, perception. Uh, farming activities. You know, we do sod. Uh, we we have a nursery. Um, we're, we stipulate the types of trees and and things that are grown at the nursery, so that we're not creating bird attractants. Uh, we host composting giveaways. Again, things that get the community out to the airport, so they understand that the airport's there, and the things that the airport can offer, other than for the transportation need. Uh, Major community events locate, can be location driven. Uh, my example is we had an event for years and years and years called the Taste of Chino, where all the, and you, you probably have these tastes of throughout your, your communities and organizations. They are where your restaurants come in and, and other uh, venue or other providers of services come in and they showcase what they do. Um, Taste of Chino, we've hosted it for a number of years in a 50,000 square foot hangar. One of our tenants empties that, uh, that hangar out and it becomes available for that taste of event. Uh, and it gets people out to the airport. You know, we can host, you know, up to 10 acres of parking, 15 acres of parking, 30 acres of parking, whatever they need uh, that they can get into this uh, 50,000 square foot venue over time. And again, it makes your airport a destination. It draws the community in. It makes you a part of the community. Um, proms dances, a parking venue, make certain that you're participating in the service organizations, the Rotaries, the Kiwanis, try to make yourself available at that seven o'clock speaking engagement so that they understand that you're there and what you can offer. Um, uh, it's, it's all about promotion at the GA level. Um, we've had a carnival associated with, uh, with an air show, um, you know, police and fire training, motorcycle training, motor training uh, at the airfield. We've got a designated course. It's closed, they can do it. They can uh, do it without being observed by the public because we're behind closed doors, right? We have access control. Unless you have a gate card, you can't get in. So they like that, they being the police organizations. Um, again, drawing people out to the community. Um, you know, I one of the Chino Airport is in an area where in uh, part of that development is literally has a shared property line. If you literally, if you reach your hand out your window, you can shake hand with your neighbors, so they don't have much space. So we have um, storage containers on airport that we make available to the uh, the homeowners association, so that when they have any number of things that they might be doing at their homes, they can't store it on the driveway. They can't. Um, store in their garages because they're small. We have storage containers on the airport. Again, just to draw the community in so that the community understands that we are part of it and we offer this service. Uh, vehicle storage, temporary vehicle storage, new vehicle storage, equipment storage, those are the types of things that you can accommodate. Um, and again, and it's some revenue generation, but it's about making certain that the community understands that you're there and what you can provide. So relative to that, I'm gonna just go into the Plains of Fame air show issue. Uh, you know, we've had the, the Plains of Fame sponsored air show going on at Chino Airport uh, since the early 70s. They took a hiatus for about a four year period uh, during the mid, uh, mid 80s and restarted early 90s. And it's been going on, you know, every year since. Uh, it, it started uh, as a Plains of Fame sponsored event we evolved to a county Plains of Fame co-sponsored event uh, where at one time, and again, you know, talking about money, uh, the county itself, you know, over a course of a uh, number of years, you know, uh, infused $100,000 per event into the event for a number of years, uh, not airport money, but county money. Uh, 
goes along with making certain that your electeds understand the value of your facility and the electeds did that on their own. Uh, return on an investment, they believed they were get, gonna get money back but they, they did upfront participate with those dollars uh, in the event. It's been an event that's been going on, it has a long history um, and then this year we have a lawsuit. Uh, we have uh, a couple of uh, disgruntled uh, tenants that uh, determined that the air show was disruptive to their business operations, uh, that they didn't have access to their leasehold facilities, and they sued. Um, they had attempted to enjoin the county in this matter uh, for about a four year period uh, prior to this year's lawsuit. Uh, and we basically told them we're meeting the conditions of your agreement. You have access. Uh, we are the sponsor. We have the right and will continue to, to host events at, at, the, air, at the airport. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's three days uh, of events uh, out of 365. And everyone at the airport has found a way to become a part of the, the program and found a way to make money. Uh, but these folks were not able to. Um, you know, I have strong opinions about uh, what has occurred there, but you know, we got down to the 12th hour and they, they withdrew uh, the lawsuit relative to the action that they were attempting to stop the air show for that particular weekend, uh, but we still face the lawsuit as a a civil action in the fall where we'll have a, a hearing to determine whether or not the air show will actually move forward in years to come. Um, this year, just so happened, I did charge a license agreement to the Plains of Fame because we have some expenses that we weren't able to recoup. Uh, the, the, the sharing agreement of profits, they've never met that threshold in the recent past, so we weren't seeing revenues. and. You know, my out-of-pocket expenses are about $10,000 a year between hard expenses and staff time. So I charged them that basically this year. I think I charged them $8,900 license fee. Um, so they had to pay me up front the license fee uh, to have the air show at the airport this year. It's a completely uh, licensed event managed and put on by the Plains of Fame. We provide the venue. We provide some services relative to infrastructure uh, preparation but it's managed by Plains of Fame. Uh, with that, that's the presentation, but I'll entertain questions. So let's go with the canned questions. <laughs> hey, James, I got some questions for you. Sure. And I'm five minutes over, I'm gonna take about three more minutes. Check, check, check. So uh, with regards to uh, your elected officials, what are some of the general talking points you would deliver to them? And follow up to that, knowing that an association now it went off. Uh, knowing that an association runs the Chino Air Show and the county runs the Apple Valley Air Show, right. is the message any different between um, that you provide your elected officials? So the answer is yes, the message is different. You know, when we're sponsoring and hosting the, you know, the Apple Valley Air Show, it's a $125,000 investment for us. Uh, we, we hire the acts, we hire the PR firm, uh, it's our event, we manage it, um, and, 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 and we allow the elected official to take credit for that event, and it's a community event. So, you know, folks uh, in the high desert, you know, it's, it's it's medium to low income area, uh, so it becomes the staycation. So they are able to promote that and we allow, you know, we, we all the resources that we put into the event, um, they're able to promote and, and do the news releases or press releases on that and, and it's a sponsored event that the county uh, is able to really leverage, um, which gives you the advantage of having that elected official, in my case, having that elected official on my side. I'm coming today from a uh, fatality at the Apple Valley Airport over the weekend that I worked, and I had the elected official that reached out to me and told me he'd go to the airport and help me work the, uh, work the accident. So that's the, the type of benefit and return that you can get by developing those relationships and allowing you know, some of your 
your investment dollars to be leveraged by the electeds. So um, relative to how the events are managed, you know, the document, the license agreement itself is a very tightly written license agreement. So those folks that are on the ground managing that event, that event being the Plains of Fame air show, um, they're trained, you know, it's, it's been going on for a number of years. You were there for a period of time, so you know that checklist is very long. Um, it's a weekly uh, meeting with all the stakeholder groups that I talked about earlier that participate. And uh, it's a routine meeting, and folks are educated. They, they, they know their, their processes, and they work from the playbook. So, you know, whenever you have an event, you develop that playbook and you build on it from year to year. And when you have those volunteers on the ground working from the playbook, you can get some utility out of them and they're not hiding under the aircraft wing drinking water instead of doing the things that you want them to do on the ground. Does anyone else have a question before I ask one more? Nope. So uh, last question. Sure. Um, you have a benchmark a line that you draw in the sand uh, for what activities are not appropriate at an air show or a fly-in. Um, where is it that you draw that line? So, you know, had the, you know, again, it had a little time to think about this, guys, so, you know, this isn't off the cuff, but this was apropos because I had this question just last week. Uh, we're in the, in the midst right now of managing and planning uh, the Apple Valley Air Show and we have an exotic car uh, promoter that uh, wants to come up and, uh, and display cars. You know, as part of our air shows, we typically allow car displays. You know, we, we set out a corner. You know, the local car guys can come and display their cars. You know, it's part of the event. Uh, he wants to use my runway to uh, run up and down, you know, and, and show how fast the, uh, the Luxottica car can go. Well. You know, why would I allow a non-aviation activity to be showcased at an air show where I don't want that to happen after hours? So anything that I don't necessarily want to happen after hours uh, or that we wouldn't promote necessarily isn't something that I want to promote, you know, during an air show event. We want to promote aviation aeronautic activities. You know, the car show, the car display, you know, it brings other folks in, but to have folks going up and down the, you know, the, the runway 120 miles an hour you're inviting that after hours if you allow that, if you showcase that or sponsor that. So, with that, you've been a great audience. And thank you, James, for coming out here and presenting on that. Uh, we went a little bit over, but again, uh, this session is sponsored by uh, Baker International and Southwest Airlines, so we thank them for their support. With that, I think we're going into the corporate business meeting. These, this is handy. I love this on here. Um, so the corporate membership meeting, is that being held in here? Does anyone know? Right in here. So thank you, everyone.
test. Uh, if the corporate folks can gather up in front, please, we'll have the corporate meeting and what's that? If you're not part of the corporate, Jessica Bryan says, get out.